on Monday, Matt bought a Bitcoin. Yesterday, he shopped with Bitcoin. Today, he's putting on his professor's tweed jacket with suede elbow patches. Oh, I wish. If only. I might only buy one Matt, of those with here, Bitcoin. You are here to give us a lesson on how yeah. a Bitcoin transaction actually works. Right. So the first couple says, days, uh, I was learning a lot from the internet, from Reddit, from Bitcoin. We're soaking uh, it up. Community. And now, a lot of people who are uninitiated have asked me, uh, hey, I saw your piece. How does that work? How can I get a Bitcoin? So just... So you know uh, how it works. I put together a very simple kind of view from 35,000 feet. And it starts with, obviously, changing your dollars or your euros or your yen or whatever you've got into bitcoins. Now, I've illustrated this by putting a regular wallet with dollars and then a digital wallet here. You've That's got what to a digital get, wallet looks like? Yes, it looks like a, more like a clutch, doesn't it? But yeah. anyway, there's the matrix. I would love to see you with There's the, the binary matrix uh, thing there. So let me explain wallets, because you have to get a wallet before uh, you can do any kind of Bitcoin transaction. For a consumer, for someone who's looking to just spend money, it works like a regular wallet. You spend out of it, you can get money into it. For a merchant or a producer, a vendor, a service provider, whatever, it kind of works like a cash register. Now, in order to make a transaction happen, uh, each wallet has two keys, a private key and a public key. If you're selling something or if you're accepting Bitcoin, uh, you show someone your public key, and that is the QR code that you see there. Uh, you can take a picture of that uh, key with your wallet if you're a buyer, and then uh, it generates a, nu a numeric code that's random. When those two things come together, the private key, your private key, and the, ben and the merchant's public key, uh, it makes a transaction. Now, those transactions all go into blocks, or you could think of it as a page on a ledger, and there are hundreds or thousands of big mining operations there that are competing to try and verify and secure those blocks. As a reward, they get 25 Bitcoin. I don't want to get too into the weeds, but what they do is they wrap a kind of digital uh, uh, armor around each block, each ledger page, and secure it. And they do it over and over and over again so that the transactions are all irreversible. So uh, it's a really interesting procedure. And what, what happens though? There's a fixed number of bitcoins. There, there so what are. happens to these mining operations that seem so critical to the transaction process when they can no longer be rewarded with new bitcoins? Well, and actually, uh, there are more and more miners out there to try and get the 25 bitcoin reward for each block that they mine. Every four years, that's going to be. Because 25 halved. bitcoin is almost 25 grand. Exactly. But every four years, it'll be half. Or tomorrow, so it'll it could be, be 12 grand. Only 12 and a half bitcoin to, uh, in four years. And by 2040, it'll only be worth one Bitcoin. So uh, the, the incentive is reduced, but the, the value, I think the people in the current right, Matt, community assume will go We have up. to leave it there, but it's day three. Are you a buyer? Are you a seller? Bitcoin. I am going to go to the Cipriani tomorrow. We're going to have a meeting of Bitcoin people, and maybe I'll buy another one. No, I'm saying of Bitcoin. How do you feel oh, about it? At I'm this real. Point? I think it's a really interesting community. It's a nascent currency. Some, like the president of PayPal, say really it's a commodity, not a currency yet, because of the fluctuation. That's a very good All right, point. So 